Okay, quick short story before we get started. This clip here is the exact example of what I'm making this video about. So here I am. I'm actually in the lead. 13.5 stadium truck class. Oh, I crash because I don't know how to drive. And then the vehicle doesn't keep going. What actually happened is the speed controller hit its internal thermal uh, protection switch, whatever, and it shut off. It, we tried to get the car to go again and it just wouldn't. Later, after it cooled down, it worked again just fine, but heat was an issue and it caused me to not finish a race. So what I wanna to do today is go over some of the things that we can do to prevent overheating so that we can finish races and protect our equipment. So the first thing is going to be probably the most common thing that all of us need is something to know how hot our equipment is kind of a given but for those of you that don't know this is something that we do a lot every time I go to a new track and I've never been there before the first thing I'll do when my car comes off of the track is I temp the electronics I temp the motor I temp the speed controller and I make sure that everything is good because if it's not then that means I need to fix it so the first thing that you're gonna look at is going to be gearing sometimes we can gear up but sometimes we can reach a point where it just, it's too much and the motor just won't stay cool enough. So what you have to do is gear appropriately for the temperature outside, the demand of the track, and a few other things that may come into factor there, but that's going to be tip number one for keeping your stuff cool is get the gearing right. If the car is getting a little bit too hot, something easy that you can try is either go to a bigger tooth spur, which is a very uncommon way to do it. More commonly, we will use a smaller pinion. So for a random example, if you have a 72 tooth spur and a 30 tooth pinion on your two wheel drive buggy, I would probably drop it down to like a 28 tooth pinion and see if that solves the problem. If it does, great. If not, then let's look at some other things that we can do to keep the temperature in check. So the next thing that you're gonna look at is going to be putting in one of these little external fans. There's a few different brands out there in variations as far as where you mount them, how you plug them in, how many you run. These are all gonna be subjective to how hot and the particular environment that you're running in. For example, if you're running in the summertime, like we are now, and you're running at a carpet track or a high bite AstroTurf track, and it's not a climate controlled environment, that motor and that speed controller are going to get smoking hot if you don't have multiple fans in the vehicle. So go ahead and slap a fan onto the speed controller. Most of the speed controllers these days come with one out of the box, so definitely run that, if not a better one that you can mount somewhere else to get some more airflow going over that. And then there's a lot of different options that we have for putting a fan on our motors. This may be totally subjective to the type of vehicle. As you can see between these two, I have one mounted on the chassis, just kind of sticky tape to it. And then I have another version here, and this is actually a really cool newer part from Shell Racing. It's a little piece that they mount right on top of their battery brace. And then you can run the fan right in the middle of the car. Some vehicles out there, depending on how they lay their gearbox and where the motor is and how much room you have in the car, this may be a perfect option for you guys. I went ahead and linked down below where you can get some of the stuff that I mentioned right down there in the description box. Last but not least, if you've geared appropriately, you slap some fans in there and you're still having a problem, some good old fashioned precisely drilled holes in your body might help get you to where you need to be. Perfect example would be like my B64 here. Sometimes it's just way too hot and a four wheel drive vehicle is a little bit harder on the electronics just because it's got a little bit extra weight, the four wheel drive gives it a little bit more requirement from the battery, the motor, the speed controller. So helping as much air as we can get inside the body to cool all of these components off, sometimes it'll help drop it a few degrees. Now, regardless of whichever one that you guys end up using or find out that works for you, 
I just want to reinforce that temp gauge that we mentioned in the beginning. Go ahead and use that thing every single time you come off of the track. Sometimes what worked in the morning, suddenly you're 10 degrees hotter in the afternoon. So just because you set it once, this wouldn't be like a set it and forget it type thing. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you keep check of these things throughout your entire race day. Right after practice, right after your qualifier, right after your mains. Doing that will ensure that your stuff will last a lot longer and you won't have any potential failures on the track, or at least less of them. So I hope you guys found those tips helpful as we enter into the heat here in the States. If you have any other tips that you'd love to share, drop them in a comment down below and I'd love to know what you guys are doing to help keep your cars cool during the summer. If you have any questions, as always, drop those in the comments as well and I will do my best to get to those. Like the video if you liked it, that does help me out quite a bit. Subscribe for future content, tutorials, tips, race results, a lot of fun stuff coming up in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next one.